that we have decided that we're going to launch a groundbreaking deal, a groundbreaking deal with the French. 63 million quid, lob that over to the French and hope that we increase the patrols on their beaches by, quotes, 40 it allows for British people to go and stand in French control rooms and look at a French man or woman as they monitor their radar so they can tell us exactly where the boats about to enter Britain are. If you ask me, it's not worth the paper it's written on, especially when you consider that it's only eight million quid more than we gave them last year. So it's the same deal, but more expensive, pretty much, with a few other little bells and whistles on it. Anyway, joining me now is former Brexit Party MEP Ben Habib. Ben, thank you very much. I'm sick and tired of hearing this is a big win. This is a uh, key now to controlling British immigration. It's absolutely not. And the thing I want to focus on is what we're going to do about security, because more and more now people are just landing in boats on our beaches and legging it off into the British countryside. And the reason why they're doing that is because they don't want asylum. They go and want to work in the illegal drug trade. And that has to stop. Well, you, you pose exactly the right question. You know, the question isn't about bilateral deals with France or bilateral deals with Rwanda, none of which work, where we, the British taxpayer, hand over hundreds of millions of pounds. You know, if you add up what we paid the French and the Rwandan government together, that's over half a billion pounds. And that for nothing in return. What we need is the security of our borders. And that starts by taking unilateral action. Rishi Sunak was on the news just before I, uh, I came on saying that this is a problem that you can't get to grips with overnight. Well, I beg to differ. This is a problem you should be able to get a grip of overnight. There's nothing preventing British Navy and Border Force absolutely having a zero tolerance approach to people entering our waters illegally and pushing them back into French waters. We need unilateral British action. If the money that we're now paying France could be diverted to our Navy and to our border force to do their job. There is no reason why we can't grip this problem overnight. Well, I I'm wondering if it's a matter of time, Ben, because for absolutely ages, for years, people like myself, and I dare say you as well, have been banging on the door going, this is a disaster. Look at these numbers. We haven't got the money for it. We've got nowhere to put them. And surely we should be doing something like taking control of our own laws and our own borders. And then now, after all of this period of time, people in local communities start to go, oh, actually, I didn't really want one of those migrant hotels in my community. Oh, actually, my house price has gone down. Oh, actually, my daughter isn't safe walking to and from school anymore. Oh, actually, maybe we should have control of our own laws so we don't get it all held back. On the yeah. I'm wondering how much more it's going to take before people go, actually, just tow the boats back. I think we might be nearly there. Well, I, I, I mean, we should have been there right at the beginning. You know, what are we? We are not an independent state if we can't control our borders. Why have we become so politically weak that we haven't got the courage to do what is our, our absolute right, which is to patrol our borders, send people back when they try and get here? And you talk about injustices. How can it be just for um, uh, Jeremy Hunt to be talking about fair tax rises, burdening the British taxpayer that's already suffering from a cost of living crisis, that already can't afford schools, can't, can't get medical treatment that they require, can't get housing that they require, while these people are treated like first-class citizens when they come into the country, are put in hotels, given free food. And by the way, people often quote the cost of housing these people at seven million a day. Well, that's just housing. Yeah. On top of that, they get medical benefit, free dentistry. They even get given cash. But the total cost, I estimate, is around five billion a year. That's the one P tax that we could have taken off the basic rate of tax for everyone in the United Kingdom. That's yeah. what this crisis is costing us. And it's completely iniquitous for the Chancellor to go around talking about being fair when this is going on under his nose. Look, Ben, Steve, Stevie Wonder can see that a lot of these people now are not asylum seekers, namely because of the amount of time it's taken them to get here. So you would initially expect, you know, a first wave of asylum seekers, a second wave of asylum seekers. We're now years yeah. into this particular crisis and shock horror. Before we know it, the vast majority of the Albanian male population is going to be living here. And just yeah. as a little thank you as well for what we're already doing, I don't know about how you felt with some of those shocking scenes, that Albanian demonstration that we had in Westminster over the weekend. Absolutely the unbelievable. The, the Albanian flag wrapped around Churchill's plinth saying, what about our human rights? I'm sorry, what about mine as a British taxpayer? 
unbelievable. What we've done by uh, with Border Force effectively acting as a taxi service and with these people being given first class treatment when they get to the UK, better than British nationals get, we've put a, 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 a a, a sort of open season sign across the top of the United Kingdom. Far from deterring people from coming in, we've been encouraging them. That's what we're doing. And the Albanians now think, including their prime minister, by the way, if you listen to what he says. Oh, well, I'll tell you what he said. economic he migrant and to pursue a better life here because he can't give them a good life in Albania. Yeah, well, exactly. But, but he's in on it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I reckon he's in on it. Because what's happening is a lot of the money that they're making over here is going back to Albania and it's being used to build lovely properties and make their country a lot nicer than it was before. It's cash in hand stuff on a grand scale. No Thank you very much. Ben Habib, thank you.